All right, guys, I got a video here I'm going to be making um, over the different parts for proteins, function, and structure. The first slide I got here, I think it's important. We talked a lot about these, about the different actual um, roles and functions of proteins. And so the biggest thing is when you look at this, number one is the enzyme. One of the jobs of proteins, the diversity of it, is the fact that they're enzymatic proteins. They also play a role in structure, and then they also will play a role in storage transport, not only transporting materials through the, um, throughout the cell, but they also play a role in uh, transporting things into the cell. And you'll hear me talk about these in other units and other chapters as we go through. So the amino acids are going to be the monomers. That's just a review. They have two parts called the carboxyl and amino group. You should be able to differentiate those. And the amino acids themselves will have an R group. That R group is going to be like a side chain that will vary between the different types of proteins. That's going to play more of a role, and that's why I want to review it when we talk about how we actually talk about the structure of the molecules of proteins. Okay, There are 20 different amino acids. Each one has a different R group associated with it. And the next few slides, I'm just going to go through those. So here you can kind of see the different parts of the molecule. On a test, don't be surprised if I have something where I have like the letter A here, the letter B here, and the letter C here, and I say which one of these is the amino group? Which one of these is the carboxyl group? Which one of these will change between the 20 different amino acids? That will be this one. Which one will stay the same? That will be this one and this one. Okay? On any test, you should be able to identify the amino group and the carboxyl group for any different amino acid. I'm going to quickly go through the 20 different amino acids. And do yourself a favor, before I kind of talk, try to identify the different parts. So here you can kind of see the different amino acids. Once again, you're responsible for knowing right here, that's the amino group, carboxyl group, that's the R group. That's the R. That's the R. That's what's going to differ. So that's what's different. This part, they stay the same, okay? I'm not going to ask you on a test to tell me that this is tryptophan, okay? But you should be able to say, hey, that's an amino acid, and it's right there. Once again, you can tell, sometimes it would be a lot easier for me if I can just cut and paste a picture, okay? It might make it a little bit easier. I might cut and paste this on the test and say, tell me, is this an amino acid, a carbohydrate, a nucleic acid, or none of the above? How do you answer that? You see this, you see this, you know it's an amino acid. More amino acids. We don't even care if you get an AP bio. You might have to learn about it, the, whether it's an acid or base and some of the other differentials. But for us, just know that these are all amino acids. All of them are going to be the building blocks of proteins. They represent like the letters in the alphabet. You combine a bunch of these, and they're going to make the different uh, polypeptides. The different polypeptides will eventually make the different proteins. Letters make words, word makes sentences. All right, so now we're going to get into the structure of proteins. Okay, how do we determine that? Uh, this stuff's a little bit new, it's not necessarily in our books, so make sure you're paying attention and you're learning as you go. The first thing I'll point out to you is that there are four levels of protein structure, and each one's determined by a different thing. The four levels are the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary levels of protein structure. And what I'll do is I'll go through how each one of them is actually determined. The first one is called the primary structure. And the primary structure of a protein is determined by the actual sequence of amino acids. So what is the order of those amino acids in the, in the protein? Do I have tryptophan, tryptophan, serine, whatever those 20, however they're arranged, that's how we determine it. I'll show you an image of that in the second page. Your secondary structure, okay, is going to be how are they going to interact. So there's hydrogen bonding that's going to occur between the actual molecules of amino acids. So those H bonds are going to actually be important for determining the secondary structure. And basically what happens is they will kind of lay flat on each other or they'll kind of coil up depending on those interactions. Your tertiary structure is determined by the side chains. How do the side chains interact? How are they going to, are two sulfurs going to form a sulfide bond? Are the acid and the bases going to interact? Are the positive uh, charged amino acids going to repel each other and a negative are going to repel and a positive and a negative are going to attract each other. All of that's determined in your tertiary structure and finally your quaternary structure. That is when the actual structure of the protein will uh, come together with multiple polypeptides. So we get four polypeptides, how are they going to come together to make this? All this stuff kind of makes sense in the context of an image. So I'll kind of show you that on the next slide. 
So here you have all the different parts of the of the structure. So once again, there's your primary structure, just how the amino acids line up. Then you have your beta pleated sheet and your alpha helix. This is our secondary structure. Then notice the interactions of the H bonds, not of the side chains, but of the actual amino acids. We then have um, those will come together and the side chains will interact. That is your tertiary structure and then your quaternary structure is how we take four polypeptides in this case, combine them together. That gives us our quaternary structure. So primary is just simply the amino acids. It's like the letters of a long word and once again whatever the order is, it's just like the beads on the diagram down below. That's your primary structure. It's determined by the actual individual amino acids. What order? If you change something in the in those order of those, it'll affect how that word is said. If you replace any of them, it'll affect how that word is said as well. So that's kind of our main one. We call it the primary because it's first, but it also, you'll find out, will dictate the rest. If I change the primary structure, it'll affect or dictate the secondary, the tertiary, and the quaternary structure. So here's an example. You can actually see these letters here. This is the primary structure, all these different letters, what order we use, however we do it, that's going to determine our primary structure. And it's going to set up the rest of them as well. Okay, the secondary structure, what that results in is going to be the interactions between the side chains and the hydrogen bonding. You can kind of see that down here. Some H and O are re responding to each other, and they'll do one of two things. To get their most stable conformation, they will lay down in beta pleated sheets doing hydrogen bonding, or they'll form what we call an alpha helix. Not that you need to know that, but just remember, what is that going to determine your secondary structure? It's the interactions of the amino acids, which is determined by that primary. So once again, you set your primary, the rest of it kind of follows suit. There you can see the two different conformations, okay? Your tertiary structure is going to be the interactions between the R groups, not the interactions of the backbone that we see in our secondary structure. Those interactions between the R groups can be hydrogen bonds, they can be ionic bonds, they can be hydrophobic interactions, they can be van der Waals strains, they can be disulfide bonds, they can have a positive can uh, repel a positive, a positive can attract a negative. All of those are just how those side chains of the 20 different amino acids interact. One of the important ones that is an actual example, and I'd, I'd highlight this, is what we call a disulfide bond. What really helps proteins stay together is when two sulfides make this disulfide bridge, it helps hold the protein together, and that's part of your tertiary structure. Your tertiary structure, once again, is determined by the side chains. The side chains are the order of the amino acids. So we've got to have those in the proper order. All right, and you can kind of see this here. So now we have two different interactions going on here between these two different molecules. Okay, Here we have some hydrogen bonding occurring between the side chains, a disulfide bond occurring, an ionic bond occurring. All those are between side chains, and therefore that's what we call our tertiary. It's going to create different loops and structures in our polypeptide. Our quaternary structures, our last one, is the actual interactions of more than one polypeptide. So for example, in this diagram here, this is uh, hemoglobin, and I have two alpha heme groups and two beta heme groups. And the four of them, how they interact, how they stack together, and their most stable conformation is going to determine the structure of the protein. So this is our last level of structure. And once again, it's the interactions of these big polypeptides. How do they come together? How do they fit? All these stages are all, the purpose of the protein is trying to get the most stable conformation. Any change to any one of these levels can affect its ability to um, properly uh, come together in, most, in a uh, particular order or form. So there you can see, in this case, polypeptide chain between four hemoglobins over here, you have collagen, you have peptide chains that are the same, interacting and coming together, and down there you have hemoglobin. So those are all examples of the quaternary structure, the big put together structure. And then this is just a nice summary, you can kind of read and see it if you're a visual learner like me, knowing the difference between a primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure of proteins. If you have questions, make sure you stop in and see me. Um, basically, you should know what each one is. Do know that it's trying to get its most stable confirmation. 
and realize that the primary structure is really going to determine the rest of them. Any changes to the primary will also impact and affect the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary, and that's how we get variation in proteins. Thanks again, guys. See you later.